morning, good morning, good morning. How are you today? Happy Sunday for me, or maybe a Saturday for you guys. How are you doing today? Sorry, I started the lesson a little bit late, uh, later than I promised yesterday as well. I was not feeling well, uh, so I ended up sleeping a little longer than I wanted to, but I'm awake, I'm up now, and I'm here. Uh, and we're going to be doing a uh, good lesson. We're going to continue our lesson from yesterday. Uh, yesterday, we were looking at the present perfect, and we're going to continue with that. We have been doing that for the last three live lessons. Uh, we've been using present perfect with for and since. We've been using present perfect with already and yet. And yesterday, we did present perfect with just. And so I thought the best thing we could do now is we do present perfect with all of them kind of like a review lesson to see if you can remember how to use for since already yet and just so that is what we'll do today uh i'm gonna wait for some people to join the lesson before i start uh since it is a little bit later than i promised yesterday and as i said yesterday uh if I keep looking down, I'm looking at my computer. My camera is here, so I apologize for that. I'm, I still need to get used to looking at the camera and being able to type and looking down. All right. Uh, as always, I'm going to put the lesson onto the screen, so I will do that right now. And as you can see, we've got a review lesson. It says review right at the top. And the thing we are going to focus on today, as I said in the introduction of this, is we are going to focus on for, since, already, yet. And yesterday we practiced just, so we're going to include that as well. So those are all of the things we're going to focus on. Now, if you need a quick or if you want a, uh, a longer explanation of how to use all of these, you can go back and look at my live lessons. Uh, I've explained what each one of these means uh, in detail. Uh, what we'll do as we're waiting for people to join, I'll give you a, a quick a quick uh, summary of this. Someone's trying to FaceTime me right now. Okay, so I'll give you a quick review of what each of these means. So bear with me as I go up into the lesson document here. All right, so let's look first at since. When we use since, we're talking about the beginning point of a period of time. We're talking about the beginning point. Now, remember, in today's lesson, and when we use for, since, already, yet, and just, we are using the present perfect. The present perfect is talking about an experience, or it's talking about an action that started in the past and will continue until now all right so that's what we will use and for since we're talking about the beginning point the beginning point all right so just for a quick review it says i live in tokyo the time period is 2010 to 2013 so let's imagine that right now is 2013 all right so that's the present time or we could even change this actually let's change it to the correct present time it's 2024 right now 2010 is the beginning point so my sentence is i have lived in tokyo since and then we're gonna put our beginning point right here all right so you've got your beginning point i have lived in tokyo since 2024. now if we are using four four is talking about the total 
period of time, the total period of time. So same thing if we were to say you know, right now it's 2024. Okay, so that is going to be not three years. The total time here is 14 years. Wow, that's a long time. Then I will use four to talk about the total amount of time. So I have lived in Tokyo for, and then I can say here, 14 years for 14 years. All right, so that since is the beginning point, four is the total amount of time. All right, so now, now let's look at how do we use already and yet, already and yet. Now, if we are talking about already, already, already is talking about any action. We use it for any action that happened before. It happened before. So it's already done. We don't know when the action happened, but it happened before. It is completed. It is completed. So, for example, and it, the position of already, that's also important. You can put it before the main verb or at the end of the sentence. So, I have already eaten lunch. Eaten is my main verb. So I have already eaten lunch. This means that the action of eating, that is done. It's completed. I don't know when, but it's done before this point right now. Next, I have seen that movie already. So again, the action of seeing the movie is done. It's completed. All right. So that's how we use already. Now, et, sorry, et, yet, yet is the opposite. It's used for a negative sentence. This basically means the action is not done. It's not done. And when we use yet, there is the feeling that the action will be done sometime. But as of now, right now, it's not done. Maybe in the future, it will be done. But right now, it is not done. So I haven't eaten dinner yet. Yet, we're going to put at the end of a sentence. So this means the action of eating dinner. I haven't done it. I haven't done it yet. But there is a promise that I will do it later. There is a kind of a a nuance that this will be done at some point later. Uh, we can use it in questions. Have you finished your homework yet? So has it already been completed? Did you finish it? And I haven't been to Italy yet. So until as of this point right now, I've never been to Italy. But I put, I, I haven't been to Italy yet. This means that there is a future promise that someday I think I will go to Italy. All right. That's how we use yet. That's how we use yet. Now, let's look at the last one, which we did yesterday. Yesterday, we practiced just, and you can see I've already got all of my board all colorful and marked up from yesterday. Just is used to tell us that the action was completed a short time before. So already, when we use already, it is telling us it's done, but we don't know when it was done. Maybe it was done a few hours ago. Maybe it was done a few weeks ago. But if we use just, it is telling us that the action was done. It was completed a very short time before the current time. So just a little while ago, a little while ago. That's how we use just. Now, just, if you look right in the middle here, it says we put it before the main verb. So right here, I have just left. I have just left. This means that a short time ago, a little while ago, I left. 
I left. I'm no longer in my house or I'm no longer at that location. All right, so those are the five words that we will be reviewing today. So let's look at our review exercise. So your review exercise, your task today is first you need to tell me what verb to use. And for the beginning, I'm very nice. I've given you the verb. But you also have to try to include one of these words up here. If you can't include it, that's okay. Not every one of these sentences needs for, since, already, yet, or just. But if you can, try to include one of those five words. For instance, number one, uh, we've got how long he live in New Jersey. Now, the answer for here, it's a question. So how long has... He lived in New Jersey. So if you notice, there was no space for one of these words. So I don't need to include it. All right. But if there's a situation where you can use or you can include one of those words, please do so. Okay. So for example, number seven, or no, number seven, number two, we're talking about play. Peter, not play baseball. Then 1987. So again, I've given you the verb. So I've got the word not also. Not means negative. So I need to say hasn't. All right. So Peter hasn't. And the past participle of play is played. So play, played played. So Peter hasn't played baseball. Now I've got another space here and I've got the word 1987. 1987. Now 1987, this would be the beginning point. This would be the beginning point of the period. So since we're talking about the beginning point, then I would say since. Peter hasn't played baseball since 1987. Since 1987. All right. Now let's look at number three. Number three says, I, and then we've got the verb speak, French, and then we've got 20 years. Okay, so again, of course, up here, we have to use have, and then we need a past participle. So my verb is speak. My verb is speak. So what is the past participle of speak? So remember, past participle is your third position, your third position of your verb. So we've got the regular verb tense. You've got your past tense, and then we've got your past participle. So we want to know that third position, and we want to know it for speak. So I know that speak is the regular tense. It's my infinitive tense. My past tense will be spoke, and my past participle is spoken. Spoken. So if we look here, I have spoken French and I've got 20 years. 20 years is the total amount of time that I've done this. It's not the beginning point. It's the total amount of time. So my answer here will be four. So I have spoken French for 20 years. Okay, so far, so good. So remember, we want to, if possible, include one of these words that we've been studying recently. So it's going to be for since already, yet, or just. 
Okay, so let's look at the next one now. Let me take the banner off. There we go. And let's look at number four. Let's make this a little bit bigger so everybody can see a little easier. Okay, so next, number four. We've got the word not again. So we know that this must be a negative sentence. So we know with we, the correct verb that will match with we is haven't. And we must know the past participle of see. Now, a second ago, we did speak, which speak was speak, spoke, spoken. But for C, the, the uh, past will be saw and the past participle will be seen. See, saw, seen. So we have to use that third position. So we haven't seen Tom. Now, we've got Christmas here. So we want to know what word will we put here are we going to put already uh yet are we going to put for are we going to put since are we going to put just now for example words like yet yet must go at the end of the sentence so we know it can't be yet and just goes before the main verb my main verb is seen so there's no just here. So we're not going to use just. Now, Christmas is not a total period of time. But Christmas can be the beginning point of a time. So Christmas here is we're talking about the beginning point. So my answer would be since Christmas. Christmas is December 25. That is a specific point. It's a beginning point. So maybe now, if today, if we're looking at now, today is March 31st. It's almost April. So for basically four months, I haven't seen Tom. All right. So Christmas is that beginning point. All right. Let's look at number five. Number five. Number five. First thing that I notice is it's a question. It's a question. So, as you can see, there's only one blank space. So, we're not going to be using for or since or already or yet or just. So, we've got Alan Fly. And this word before as well. So, we first have to figure out what is the past participle of fly. What is the past participle of fly? Uh, the past tense of fly is going to be flu and the past participle of fly will be flown as you can see on your screen right now so my sentence alan is a boy's name it's a boy's name so we will say has alan flown in an airplane before has alan flown in an airplane before all right so this is a yes no question so if somebody were to ask you this question there are two possible answers one is yes he has and the other one would be no he hasn't all right so two possible answers has alan flown in an airplane before yes he has no, he hasn't. Okay, good job. So, again, anytime you have a question regarding any of these sentences, if you're still confused about how we use uh, the already for, yet, since, just, if you're confused about that, you can ask me in the comments section. I'll be more than willing to help you. Uh, also, if you have any questions that you remember later, just leave them in the comment section. I will get to you. HS, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are you today? 
also, if you're watching this on the replay, you can always leave your answers as well in the comment section. Anyone watching on the replay, don't forget to like and share and subscribe to this channel. All right, from number six, we're going to start. It's going to be starting to, it's going to start to become a little bit more difficult because as you notice, there's no verb here. One through five was the warm up. I was helping you by giving you the verb to use. From number six, there is no verb. So you need to think of the verb, think of the past participle of that verb, and then do I include for since already, yet, or just? All right, so number six says Shannon. Shannon is a woman's name. Shannon, and then we've got not. We know it's a negative sentence to lunch and then we've got another blank spot now yesterday i went over you know a lot of times when we have prepositions when we're when we got prepositions it's really important that mm -hmm. we look at the prepositions because the prepositions will give us information so here i've got the preposition to i've got the preposition to so this is telling us some information here. Uh, and I think HS, I think this is going to be number six you're answering. But yeah, perfect, perfect. So Shannon hasn't gone to lunch yet. We're not going to say eat because of this, this preposition here, too. Two is talking about a location. We're talking about moving from one point to another. So the typical verb we use with two will be go. She hasn't gone to lunch yet. If there was no two, then it could be she hasn't eaten lunch yet. But because we've got the verb to in here, we have to use gone. All right. Perfect. Good job, HS. Number seven, our class. And again, we're not giving you the verb. A field trip three times this year. And for this one, I want you to include one of the words that I've been using or one of the words that we've been using. So I want you to include already uh, just for since or yet. I want you to include one of these as well. So our class something, a field trip three times this year. Our class, something, a field trip, three times this year. Now, there can be po many possible verbs we can use. So the first thing we should always start with is let's match our subject with the first verb, our auxiliary verb, which is have. So our class has Now, next we need to figure out the actual verb that I, you'll use for this. And so for me, what I would say is our class has and I'm going to choose one of the words below as well. Our class has already taken a field trip three times this year. Our class has already taken a field trip three times this year. Now, HS, you had a different answer. Our class has already had a field trip three times this year. Also good. Also good. Also good answer. Now, there's many words, uh, as HS says, had. Uh, gone, we could say as well. Our class has already gone. 
And then if it's going to be gone, I need to put on, gone on a field trip. Our class has already gone on a field trip three times this year. All right, so there's many possible verbs that you can use. So just be careful about which one you will use. Okay, let's continue. Let's look at number eight. Number eight. Jennifer something that question four times today. Again, please include one of these words. Jennifer, that question four times today. So because it's a question, and then four times today, that's a lot of uh, a lot of times to ask the same question. It's that question. That question means it's the same question. So if it's a question, there's basically only one verb we're going to use and we have to first match Jennifer has and I would put already asked Jennifer has already asked that question four times today there could be one possible other verb we could do Jennifer has already answered that question four times today maybe Many people keep asking her the same question. So she's already answered it. She has already answered that four times today. All right, perfect. Good job. Let's look down. Today's not going to be the longest uh, lesson today. Uh, we're just, it's a review lesson, so it... We'll probably do another five or six of these questions and then we'll call it a lesson. Uh, I will be doing a lot of live lessons this week. Uh, so make sure you hit your notification bell. It'll tell you, it'll give you updates uh, on my community site and it'll tell you when my next live is. Uh, number nine. Number nine is probably a, one of the more difficult ones. Because if you notice, I've got a comma here, and then I've got have you. It's a question. We know it's a question. But this is a very specific type of question. It's called a tag question. Tag questions are very, very common in English, especially when we want to start a conversation. All right, so what would be here? And just to give you information, a uh, very common tag question would be, you know, it's a beautiful day today, isn't it? It's a beautiful day today, isn't it? That's a very common tag question. Now, what you should know about tag questions is that in the beginning, there's going to be two clauses. So we're separating it with a comma. So we're going to have a positive verb followed by a negative verb. For example, in the tag question example I've given you, or it could be the opposite. We can start with a negative verb and then we end in a positive verb. Now, Negative and positive, this just means, negative means I'm using not. Not is included in that verb. Positive means there's no not. So if you look here in the second part of the sentence, it the verb is have. This is positive verb. So we know that in the beginning part of the sentence, it should be negative. So we know here it's going to be haven't. And then we're talking about lunch. We're talking about lunch. So I know that lunch is a verb we use. The verb we use for lunch or for dinner or for breakfast 
is going to be eat. Eat. So you haven't eaten lunch. And the second verb we're going to use right here is going to be, not verbs, sorry, then the second word will be yet. You haven't eaten lunch yet, have you? You haven't eaten lunch yet, have you? HS, perfect. You haven't had lunch yet. Good. You use a different word. Nice. Paramesh, hey, how are you, buddy? I haven't seen you for a while. How are you? Uh, HS, perfect. You haven't had lunch yet, have you? You haven't eaten lunch yet, have you? Perfect. All right, so let's put this down here. I'm going to move this all the way up to the top. All right, let's continue with number nine. We, we know it's a question. So we're, again, we're using the present perfect, right? Present perfect is going, going to be have, has, plus my past participle. Uh, today, we're also going to be including trying to include if possible when possible you're going to be including one of these words for since already yet and just make sure that my past participle is the third position of the verbs all right so number 10 number 10 says how long how long something they peter So I've given you the subject, so we can begin the first part of this. How long have they? How long have they? And then we have to figure out the verb we're going to use here. Now, whenever we're making a WH question, the i'm going to give you the pattern of how we make the sentences all right so this is going to be the pattern if you ever want to make a wh question and how i consider to be part of the wh questions this is the pattern we would do so we'd have our wh question in this sentence it's how long then we need to have our have or has, depending on the subject. So here our subject is they. So how long have they? Next, we need the past participle verb. Next, we need the past participle verb. And then we can continue the question. So for me, number 10, we're talking about a person. How long have they known Peter? How long have they known Peter? Excellent, excellent, Parish. Uh, what about you? Uh, I'm okay. I'm a little bit sick. I'm a little bit sick. I don't know what I have, but uh, I am a little bit sick. But not bad. I'm. I'm still. I'm okay. Uh, how long have they talked with Peter? Okay, that's okay. That's perfect as well. You've added with as well. That is perfect. Uh, without with, it doesn't work. So good job, Parish. Uh, HS, how long have they, don't forget they, how long have they known Peter HS? Very good. All right. Excellent. Good job to both of you there. All right. Now let's look at number 11, number 11. So number 11 says, I'll keep number uh, 10 on the screen. Number 11 says Alexandra, Alexandra, which is a typically a, a female name, but could be a male name. And, you know, my name is typically a female name, but uh, we've got at IBM, we've got 2000. Right? IBM, we know, is a famous company. 
So Alexandra, something at IBM, something 2002. Now remember, we'll, we'll be using uh, have, has, plus a past participle, and then please include for since already yet or just. So we know because it's a person that we know that the the have verb is going to be has. <clears throat> so I always suggest, you know, do what you can do, say what you can say, so to get the momentum building. So Alexandra has then IBM is a company. IBM is a company, so we know that the verb that we're typically going to use for a company for a job for an office is going to be work work and work is a great verb because it's a regular verb what does a regular verb mean a regular verb means that when we make the past tense or the past participle we just use ed irregular verbs like we've been practicing they have a completely different spelling a completely different past and past participle. But a regular verb is completely, completely simple. We just add ed. So how long, or Alexander has worked at IBM. And 2002, 2002 is going to be my beginning point. 2002 is going to be my beginning point. So... I would put since 2002. Alexander has worked at IBM since 2002. And HS, Alexander has worked at IBM since 2002. Perfect. Perfect, perfect. All right, now let's look. We got a few more we'll do. And then I'll uh, I'll take any questions you have or if you don't, then we'll call it a day. So number 12, number 12, Sally not. We know this must be a negative sentence. We do have a blank space here. So remember, we do want to add one of these words as well. So Sally, again, it's a person's name. Typically in North America, in Canada and America, Sally is a female's name. But like I said, it could be a male name as well. So because it's a person's name, we're going to use has. We know it's a negative sentence. So it's going to be hasn't. Sally hasn't. And that book, that book, we're talking about a specific book, a specific book. So Sally hasn't that book. And then we need to have a final word here. So when we think about a book, what is the verb that comes to your mind when you think about book? You think about magazine or book or novel. The verb that we typically would think of is read, read. And HS, uh, perfect answer, perfect answer. But before I put HS's answer uh, onto the screen, let's just go over the past tense and past participle of read. Read is a funny verb. It's an irregular verb. So that means it doesn't follow the ED pattern. And it's a funny one because it actually is spelled the same. It's spelled the same for all three of the versions, but the pronunciation will change. Regular tense is read. Past tense and past participle is 
red and red. Kind of like the color, the color red. So read red, red. And if we look at HS's answer here, Sally hasn't read that book yet. Sally hasn't read that book yet. So in this one, we can see Sally hasn't read that book yet. All right. So we know that yet, it means not yet. It will happen at some point. Uh, so Paramesh, Sally hasn't read that book yet. Uh, I also want to include your other one here, Paramesh. Sally hasn't returned me that book yet. Now, you're almost correct here. I, I like. I'm glad you put this one, Paramesh. You're almost correct here. I'm going to put that whole sentence right here. Uh, Sally hasn't returned that book. Now, we could just end it with yet. But here, the sentence is very unclear. Who hasn't she returned it to the library? You, her friend, we don't know. So you included the word me. Just the location needs to be in a different spot. Sally hasn't returned that book to me yet. Sally hasn't returned that book to me yet. All right, so this is also a great sentence. Also a great sentence. Sally hasn't returned that book to me yet. All right, well done. Good job, Paramesh. Good job, HS. Okay, number 13, number 13. We've got they for work and question mark. All right, so we know it's a question. This is kind of a difficult one. We know, you know, whenever we have a question, there's gonna be two possibilities. It could be a yes, no question. Now, if we have a yes, no question, let's put that right up here. A yes, no question is always going to start with has or have. We need to have our subject next and then our past participle. So that would be a yes, no question. Or it could be a WH question. That means it would follow this pattern. You need to determine, you need to figure out which type of question is it. Is it a WH question or is it a yes, no question? And when you determine that, what would your answer be? Number 13 is probably one of the more tricky ones. But once you answer it, you'll realize it's not that difficult. So it is quite difficult. Uh, so I, I will give you a hint. For me, I would probably make this into a yes, no question. I would probably make this into a yes, no question. So I would use the following pattern, have, has, and we know it's they. So it's going to be have they. Have they, I need my past participle verb for work. And then I also need to include one of these words for, since, already, yet, or just. And there is a kind of a trick here. As you can see, the blank space is at the end of the sentence. Now, if you join me during my other lives, we know that only a few of these words we can put at the end. 
Now, foreign synths need something. Just goes before the main verb, but yet and already can come at the end of the sentence. Yet and already can come at the end of the sentence. So, Parish, you got, have they realized for work yet? Have they realized for work yet? Realize here is probably not the verb we want to use. I think yet is a, a correct choice. I think the verb we need to change. Realize means kind of like you didn't, you didn't know something and then suddenly you understand it. Suddenly you remember it. Say, oh, I realized. Right. So it's a little bit different. Good try, though. Very good try. I think you're correct. I think yet is going to be the best solution here because it is a question. And we often use yet in questions. All right, HS, have they haven't, okay, haven't they gotten started for work yet? Haven't they got started for work yet? This is okay. This is okay. Uh, I, I kind of understand what you're trying to say. It's started. Started means work. If there's no for, haven't they gotten started work yet? I think that's a better question, but I've got four. For, for work. So yesterday I, I talked about this. You can go to work. Go to work. And then for work, we often use a different verb. We're going to often use a different verb. Uh, Paramesh, uh, have they understood for work yet? Understood means that you're understanding something. Uh, that you under you that you know the content. But here, for is the key word. For, if we talk about for, if just like two, to work, we're talking about some movement. And for work is also talking about movement. So my verb must be a movement verb, a movement verb. Now, again, there could be many, many answers for this. For me, what I would say here is have they left, have they left for work yet? Have they left for work yet? So I want to know, did they leave their house yet? Are they still at home or have they left yet? And so a lot of times when you've got that, and I mentioned this yesterday, you go to work. That means you're talking about the action of going from your home to your office and then leave for work. This is just talking about leaving the house and you're leaving the house because the destination, eventual destination will be work. But we're, the action of leaving the house means just opening the door and leaving the house. But go, go means that you're already in the process of moving to the office. Maybe you're 50% of the way there. Maybe you're almost there. Uh, but go is talking about the movement to the office. Leave is talking about the movement outside of your house. All right, so that was a tricky one. Tricky one there. All right, let's let's look at number. We got three more. We're gonna do. Uh, we got we got some more here, but uh, 
for now, let's go 14, 15, 16, uh, and the 17 we can do for homework. Number 14 says, Bill, something not very far today in his car. Paramesh, I like it. I like it. Can we say, have they got ready for work yet? Excellent. That's perfect. That's another uh, another great option. Yeah, I, I like it. That is perfectly acceptable. That's a great answer. Have they got ready for work yet? All right. So let's just move this to the side. And let's put your answer up here. Have they got or gotten, depending on which, do you like British English or American English? Have they gotten ready for work yet? Perfect. Okay. Excellent. Paramesh, excellent answer. Well done. All right, uh, let's look now at number 14. Number 14, Bill, something not very far today in his car. Bill, something not very far today in his car. No, don't thank me. You did it. You did it. Well done. Good job. You should thank yourself. Good job. All right, so Bill, something not very far today in his car. That could be a couple of verbs, a couple of, you know, obvious verbs I could use for this. Because we're talking about car, there is an obvious verb we can use. So what would you answer here? Bill, and then it's a negative sentence. So we know we have to use haven't or hasn't. Bill is a typical man's name, uh, guy's name, but it you know, could be a woman's name. I know some girls who are named Billy. But because we already know it's a person, and I'll put it below, uh, we know it's going to be hasn't. And all you have to do is think of your verb now. Uh, Bill. Yeah, Bill is a person's name, Paramesh. Usually a man's name could be a woman's name. You know, it's really interesting is... In, in English, like English names are really, really interesting. So we often have nicknames, but some of the nicknames for names are have already been decided. Now, for instance, let's say the name Robert, Robert, the nickname for Robert or the shortened, maybe not nickname, the shortened version uh, for Robert is going to be Bob. All right, Bob is the shortened version of Robert. Now, Bill is the same thing. Bill is the same thing. Bill is actually a shortened version uh, of another name. And that would be William. William, the shortened version of William is Bill. I don't know why, but uh, William... If, if you know a guy or a man, a person, a woman named William, you could call them Bill. Robert, you call them Bob. Uh, so, Paramesh, your answer here, Bill hasn't driven very far today in his car. Perfect. Perfect. 
Bill hasn't driven very far today in his car. Now, if I wanted to choose another verb, the verb could be gone. Bill hasn't gone very far today in his car. Driven is the obvious choice because we're we're talking about a car. But we could use go, which means gone. All right, number 15. Number 15, what would be your answer for number 15? It says, we, I haven't given you the verb, but I've got another verb here, eating seafood all of our lives. What would we say here? We something, something, eating seafood all our lives. It's not a negative sentence. If you want to make it a negative sentence, you can. That's up to you. Uh, for me, we know that we have we. So let's put the verb that the first verb, which should be have. We have. Now, my key word here is going to be eating, the ing form of the verb eat, eating. So what would the verb be? What verb would we use to complete the sentence? And remember, your verb has to be a past participle verb, which is your third position verb. We have something eating seafood all of our lives. We have something eating seafood all of our lives. Now, the key word here again is ing. Uh, ing. ing is your key word. Think about when you use an ing verb. Whenever you're using an ing verb, what is the verb that we usually use together with it? And there's usually it's always going to be the same verb. There's a special verb we like to use. It's not always the same, but I would say most of the time we're going to use a special helping verb with an ing verb. Uh, Piramesh, you got, uh, we have known eating seafood all our lives. Not known, not known. Know and eating, a known and ing, we usually don't use together. Hey, Kony, how are you? How are you? Sorry, I started late today. I had a massive headache this morning, so I couldn't get out of bed. I've actually had a headache for like four days, but hi, I'm glad you joined. So, Cody, this is uh, kind of like the review of yesterday, but we're also including words like for, since, already, yet, just. Yesterday, we just focused on just. Uh, today, we're using all of the words for, since, already, and yet. Thank you very much, Coney. Uh, so HS, we you're using a negative one here. We haven't tried eating seafood all of our lives. Yeah, that would work. That would work. That would work. So uh, we haven't tried eating seafood all of our lives. Grammatically, HS, this works. This works. Uh, why do I say grammatically it works? If you're taking a test, yes, your teacher has to give you a correct mark for this. But in spoken English, because it's all of our lives, all of our lives, 
there's an easier way to say this in English. And I think most native speakers, we would say we have never eaten seafood. Never means all of my life. Right, so your answer is correct, but there's probably a better one. There's probably a better one. Uh, and because it's ing, which I've said, the verb, and Kony, your answer is perfect. We have been eating seafood all of our lives. We have been eating. Whenever you have an ing verb, any ing verb, the most common helping verb is going to be a be verb. I want you to think back how many times we use ing. You know, I am talking to you. So I am talking to you. So it's usually the be verb which we use for an ing. So we've been eating seafood all of our lives. And that that's as I say that, it's really important. Maybe that we start to abbreviate things. We've been, we've been. I want you to try, make sure that you're shortening everything. Not we have been, that's fine. But in spoken English, we've been, we've been. Manuel, Manuel, hi, how are you today? How are you today? I hope you're having a great day. Good to see you. All right. So, Paramesh, you have a question. Why don't we use have known with eating? When you talk about have known, known means that you have some type of knowledge or understanding. Knowledge or understanding. So, we can say, I have known. And then usually it's going to be a noun here, not a verb. I have known him, a person. I've known about that. I've known about that story. It can be a noun. We don't know about an action, especially eating. I've known about that dish, we could say. I know about that dish. Uh, I know how to eat, we could say. But no means the process of something, the knowledge of something. So we're not going to say eating here. Okay. Usually we don't use no with a verb. It will be a subject. It will be a noun or an object. Uh, Manuel, I'm doing well. Uh, does that answer your question? Is that clear? Uh, let me know if it's still confusing and I'll try to explain it in a, a different way. Uh, I'm doing well, Manuel. I'm doing well. Uh, much better. Uh, you, my day's going pretty well. In Columbia, it's 9 p.m. on Saturday. Yeah, sa my Saturday was yesterday. I'm so sad that it's finished. Uh, but it is Sunday, and it's a beautiful Sunday here in Tokyo. It's uh, 11 a.m. here, so I've still got the full day ahead of me. Uh, Manuel, you're at home. You're at home on a Saturday. Uh, why aren't you out enjoying Colombian nightlife? No, eating is going to be a verb here still. Eating is going to be a verb still, man. Ah, uh, permission. Yeah, Kony, so yeah, over in Peru, right? So same time. So yeah, if you're going to use no, Paramesh, no, I have known, I have known, we're generally going to use a person, place, or thing. A person, place, or thing. We're not going to use an ing verb with, with no. Okay, no plus an ing, we we don't use it. It's because you're talking about I understand, I understand, and it's going to be something, not an action. 
So the action of eating, we're not going to say that. You can say, I know how to eat. I know how to drive. So if you include the question word how, then it works. But just an ing verb, we don't we don't use with no. It's something that we'll never do. All right, uh, let's look at number 16. Number 16, huge blank space. All I've got is I in breakfast. I in breakfast. How do we complete that sentence? Of course, using have as plus a past participle. And if possible, include one of these words as well. All right, HS, I have already fixed breakfast. Nice. I've already fixed breakfast. Yes, this is a great sentence. It's a sentence we don't really hear very often anymore, but it's, yeah. Uh, this is very common sentence in the south part of America. So if you're talking about the sort of the deep south, Texas, Tennessee, the Carolinas, uh, fix Fix breakfast is very common there. I've already fixed breakfast. It means to make. I've already made breakfast. Excellent answer, uh, HS. Anybody else have an answer? I have self-prepared and taken my breakfast. Okay, here, because you've got the subject I, we don't need to say self. I have prepared. And the verb here, not take. A lot of, a lot of people will use take for food. We're going to take breakfast, lunch, or dinner. We don't take the food. If, if you say take, in English, we have the nuance that you are stealing breakfast. You're stealing something. I've just taken it. Uh, better here would be to eat or had. So you could say, I have prepared and had breakfast. I have prepared and eaten breakfast. And then as HS, she, uh, you, she included already into the sentence. So I have already prepared and eaten breakfast. Now, so far I've told you, you know, using yet, using yet is always going to be at the end of the sentence. You know, if we use yet, it's going to be at the end of the sentence. Now, if you wanted, there is a way we can use yet in the middle of the sentence. There is a way to use it in the middle of the sentence. Uh, there you go. Just don't forget. I've I've just finished eating my breakfast. But honestly, Coney, if you made this sentence, I just finished my breakfast. I just finished eating my breakfast. Uh, also, nice. You used finished and eating as well. Very well used. Uh, very good job. You used an ing verb as well. Uh, this sentence is perfect in America or Canada. It, grammatically, you need to put I have just finished. But in spoken English, if you said this uh, in Canada, America, nobody would 
consider it incorrect. Nobody would even know. So perfect. Uh, I, I do want to give one sort of advanced way to use yet. This is kind of a bonus. I haven't taught this. So maybe some of you know it. Maybe it's new to you. Uh, I'm going to show you how to use yet in the middle of the sentence. Now, typically, our sentence, if I'm using yet, I would say I haven't eaten breakfast yet. I haven't eaten breakfast yet. Yeah, in spoken English, perfect. Perfect. But if you're taking a test, make sure you include the I've. You're very welcome. So uh, let, let me challenge everybody, everybody watching right now. I haven't eaten breakfast yet. Is there any way you can put yet in the sentence up here? You want to put yet the sentence up here, but you're not going to put it at the end. You're going to put it in the middle of the sentence and it will have the same meaning. Does anybody know how to do that? I haven't eaten breakfast yet. That's a perfect sentence. I want to say the same thing. But I want to put it in the middle of the sentence. I haven't taught this. Uh, when we did the yet and already lesson, I didn't go over it. This is a very formal, very uh, advanced way to use yet. I'm going to give everybody uh, just a little bit of time uh, to think about this. Uh, so, Kony, I haven't yet eaten breakfast. That would work. That would work. Yeah, I haven't yet eaten breakfast. That works. Good. You've used it in the middle. Is there, I haven't eaten yet my breakfast. Put yet, uh, Paramesh, in the middle. In the middle. Uh, we always like to put those words before the main verb. So I haven't yet eaten my breakfast. There is another way to say this. And my hint for you guys here is... We're not going to make a negative sentence. There's no haven't. There's no haven't. So I give everybody a little bit more time. Okay, and then the hint here uh, is I'm not going to use negative sentence here. I'm not going to use negative. Good guess. Good guess, Paramesh. Good guess. I've eaten yet my breakfast. Good guess. Uh, but no, this is really, it's a really advanced way to say or to use yet. It has the same meaning. The meaning will be, I haven't eaten breakfast yet. I haven't yet eaten breakfast. That's completely fine. Kony, almost there. Almost there. You're almost there. I have yet... I have yet, and what we're going to say here is we're not using the past participle. We will not use a past participle here. We will use an infinitive. Infinitive, that's a very fancy way, and I'm going to put infinitive uh, on the board here. Infinitive, basically it's a fancy word to mean 
two plus verb two plus verb so do not use a past participle please use your infinitive uh, and then just add the one word here so i have yet to eat what we're gonna say is i have yet to eat I've yet to eat breakfast. I have yet to eat. Infinitive, we need to add that uh, to as well. To plus the verb. I've yet to eat breakfast. It has the same meaning. I haven't eaten breakfast yet. It's just a very more formal way to say this sentence. Uh, it's, it's not as common, but if you want to speak with a little bit more business English or a little bit more formality, then yeah, it's definitely correct. It's definitely correct. I've yet to eat breakfast. And that's me. I've yet to eat breakfast or lunch. All right. So just a little bonus there of maybe a little bit more complex English. Uh, let's do one more, one more, and then we'll call it a lesson. Uh, I not the project. This is probably the easiest one. I not the project. Yes. So yet means not. Correct. Correct, correct, correct. You're welcome, Barish. So yeah, next time you want to use yet in a sentence, try this. There's so many things, you know, talk, think about all the things you haven't done yet. You just change it. You know, for me, I have yet to, I have yet to do laundry. Got a lot of laundry to do today. And the meaning is the same. It means I have, there is a kind of a nuance, a future promise of doing the action. Paramesh, I haven't completed the project yet. Perfect. All right, so Paramesh, now change it to the new way, to the more difficult way, the more business style, the more formal way. How do we change that like we did for number 16? So completed is a great verb. Another verb we could say is finished. I haven't finished my project yet or the project yet. I haven't started the project yet. And then if we use it the other way, we're going to use I have yet, I have yet is the order we would use there. I have yet. Who can finish that one? There we go. Uh, I haven't regenerated the project yet. Yeah, it's a really complex word, Paramesh. So the same thing we could be we could say just as we used here. You know, you could say uh, I have yet to finish the project. I've yet to finish the project. I've yet to start the project. 
same meaning. So HS, I haven't finished the project yet, or can I say I haven't completed the project yet? Yes. Perfect. Yeah, Paramesha answered completed. So that is completely correct. I've yet to complete the project. That also works. And so in the new way of answering this, the new way would be I've yet to complete the project. Traditional way is I haven't completed the project yet. I haven't started the project yet. I haven't finished the project yet. Those would be the traditional ways to say it. The more complex, the more formal way is the bottom one, which I've got on the screen. Good question, HS. Okay, so... Uh, Let's wrap it up there. My, I was planning to do a short lesson, but we ended up going over uh, an hour. We're at an hour and 20 minutes right now. I do have some more here. Uh, here, it's kind of like a... You're just going to circle the answer here. So 18 to 23 is just... For example, they have lived in that house since or for choose the correct answer they have lived in that house for 10 years all you're going to do is circle the correct answer so if you would like homework you could do 19 to 23 19 to 23 and just circle it or for homework purposes just type in like for example number 18 the answer would be four for number 19 the answer is and choose just or yet. So I'll leave that part on the screen so you can see it now. You can take a screenshot. But of course, just pause the video when you're doing the homework. Uh, I've liked singing since I was born. Nice. Nice. Are you a good singer, Coney? I used to like singing so much when I was a kid. And I thought I was really good. And then something happened. <laughs> I, I no longer, I was no longer good. Is this sentence correct, Mr. Yeah, I've liked singing since I was a kid. Yeah. I've liked, I've loved singing since I was born. Yes, perfect. Yeah, that's a perfect sentence. No, <laughs> you're not a good. <laughs> yeah, since I was born is commonly used, Coney. It, it's just telling us like, Basically, from since I was alive, I've loved it. And of course, when you're a baby, nobody knows what you like or you don't like. But the nuance of this sentence means very, very, very long time. It means like forever, from when I was zero to now. Yeah, perfect sentence. Any other questions from anyone? And uh, feel free. I, it's Sunday for me. I've got zero plans today. So if you've got questions, I can answer them. I've got a lot of time today. I don't have to go to my school today. I am completely free. I'm going to be making pizza uh, in a little bit. But if you have any questions, fire away. I'll do my best to answer them as clearly as I can. And if we don't have any questions, that's also, that's fine. Uh, we got a little bit of homework here. It's kind of a multiple choice type of sentence. Yet sometimes means, but could you make some example sentences, please? Yeah, yet is really commonly used uh, as a variation of but. So, let me just make some sentences here for you. One sec, let me.
Good question, by the way, Connie. Uh, you know, we've got words like however as well. However would work as well. Uh, let's put it, I'm not going to put it in the message box. I'll, I'll make a banner for this. Okay, let's see if this works. Wow, it's too small. Let's go here. Okay, look, let's look at the first one. I wanted to go for a run, yet it started raining heavily. She promised to call me, yet I haven't heard from her all day. He claimed he would finish the project on time, yet... It's still incomplete. So why do we use yet? Why do we use yet in sentences like this? Why don't I use but? Basically has the same meaning. Okay, I'm just going to make it bigger so it's easier to see. It basically has the same meaning as but. There is a small nuance where it's different. I uh, know, Cody, it's not homework for now. You can do it whenever you want. Uh, there is a small difference. Yet is showing that there is more surprise, that something is surprising you. Okay, but is just showing contrast. Yet is showing contrast, but you're surprised a little. It's unexpected. Okay, does that answer your question, Cody? Yeah, perfect. Good. Yeah. So it has the same meaning. Just, yeah, if something is unexpected, if something is a little bit surprising and you're a little bit shocked about it, then use yet. If it's just a simple contrast, plus and minus, you can use but. And then if you want to be a little bit more formal, please use however. All right. Any more questions? Okay, if there are no more questions, that's great. Uh, thank you for all joining today. Thank you, everybody was very active in the comments section today. Uh, some of you were just watching, which is also great. Uh, the more you're active, the better your English becomes. By the way, Coney, I do understand. I did research yesterday. Go Dutch. Why do we say Dutch? Uh, it's rooted in the Dutch culture. Uh, in Dutch culture in the 19th century, uh, it is basically everyone must contribute fairly. So their culture is always based on fairness. So that's why we say go Dutch means it's fair. To split the bill means we're going fair. Uh, HS, you've written them down. Yes. Let me, sorry, let me put these back up here. If you, if you want to write them down, if you're still writing, that's great. 
Uh, you can just pause the video now if you want. Uh, everybody else, it was great to see everyone. It was great that everybody is active. Everybody did a great job in today's lesson. I will be doing a lot of lives this week. Uh, I have a lot of extra free time this week. So I will try to make a schedule today and I'll post my schedule for the live lessons this week. But I usually, I always do a lesson on Thursday, but I will be doing some more uh, at different times this week. Uh, I might even do one tonight, late tonight, uh, depending on uh, if I get some comments on my community site. But check out my community site. I'll be doing a lot of live lessons this week. And if you have any requests, please let me know. Teresa, good morning. Good morning. How are you? Uh, yeah, it was, Cody, it got me, I got me thinking, why do we say Dutch? Why don't we say, let's go Canadian? Let's go, you know, let's go Japanese. Let's go Australian. Uh, let's go Peruvian. Yeah, apparently the Dutch culture, everything was equally shared. Work was equally shared. So we say go Dutch. Uh, Teresa, you're good. That's good. Unfortunately, I'm sorry, Teresa. We're actually ending the lesson right now. Uh, I know you, there's a time difference for you, so you're probably just waking up. Uh, but I will, I'm thinking about doing another lesson tonight, so I'll let you know, Teresa. If anybody has a request for a specific grammar lesson they want to do, just let me know in the comment section, and I'll get that lesson ready for you. Uh, we'll do a variety of difficult and easy lessons this week. Uh, we'll do some really difficult ones as well, so... Uh, make sure you look out for my next live. Okay, now there's two places you can send the homework, Kony. Uh, you can actually comment on the on the video. So after I stop the video, uh, there will be the comment section. You can comment there. Or uh, if you go to my my page on YouTube, and if you go about the, the about information, so about me, about the channel, there will actually be my email address there. And you can email me directly if you want. Uh, also, in that email address, if you want any of these lessons, like if you want a PDF copy of these lessons, you can send me a message there and I can give it to you. Uh, I can't include the PDF into the comment section. I'm working on creating a downloadable link for the pdf uh, and i'll put that in the future but for now if you want a copy just email it to my email address you can find that on my page just go to about shelly's english school and there'll be an email address there uh, otherwise just leave it in the comment section i i will check all the answers all right guys uh i will see you again soon and thank you for joining and until the next lesson See ya.